All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and to some more buckshot testing on what is essentially the first actually legitimately cold morning of the year. I think we got down to 29 degrees last night and it's about 35 now, so beautiful morning, but a little bit chilly as well compared to what we have been seeing. Either way, we've got a shell and choke combo that a lot of you guys have been requesting to see since we first tested these particular shells a few weeks ago. So I'm definitely excited to test it and just see what it can give us because there's a real potential that it could be super impressive. But as for the shells I brought out here today, I got out some more of the Federal Copper Plated Buckshot Loads. These ones are the 12 gauge, 3 inch, 10 pellet load of triple lot buck moving about 1225 feet per second. And in our testing, triple lot buck has tended to be a little bit finicky sometimes, but from what I can remember, these did pretty well out of our stock factory full choke and stuff that we ran them through previously. And Copper Plated Federals generally seem to do pretty well across the board. Now these are not a flight control load, so do I expect to see flight control type of patterns maybe maybe not but we should have a very nice usable pattern through today's choke anyway and as for today's setup that we're going to be running those through i brought out the remington 870 special purpose with a 24 inch barrel and a kicks buck kicker full choke this particular buck kicker full measures out right at a 693 constriction and has been a very very reliably good performer with the vast majority of buckshot loads that we've ran through it so far so i expect to continue to see good results out of it. I think it's just going to come down to it being right at a 693 full choke constriction with a triple lot buck pellet that's a little bit larger than your double lot buck and stuff and how well is that going to work together. But as for today's test, everything is set up the same as usual. I've got the big sheet of paper at 40 yards. I've got the chronograph so we can get our velocity from the shell and I've got the templates that we can lay up over our results. So let's get you guys a view of this target and we'll take the shot and see just what these federal triple lot buck copper plated shells can do through the 870 with the buck kicker full. I think we're going to see a pretty decent looking pattern, but we don't know until we try it. So let's take our shot and see what we get. All right, so that round gave us 1224 through the chronograph. The boss claim is 1225. So we are about as close as you can get without being right on. So our velocity is looking pretty well perfect up here, but what kind of a pattern did it actually give us down at 40 yards? Let's go check it out and see what we got. All right, so now we're down here at our 40 yard paper and this is what we got. And I gotta say, it is pretty interesting and not really what I expected to have happen. But right off the bat, as you can see, we have eight pellets out of the 10 through the paper there, maybe just a touch off to the right, but we have one big hole down at the bottom there, which was our little wad. And I'll go ahead and tell you right now what happened and we'll look at the wad here in a few minutes, but eight out of the 10 pellets actually released from the wad and flew in their own pattern, which we had a pretty decent overall pattern there is for size but the other two kind of jammed through the bottom of the wad and got stuck in the bottom of it which is why our wad flew all the way down here and managed to make it completely through not only several sheets of paper but there's a board right there behind where that hole is as well on this pallet that it punched through so i know that those two pellets were still stuck in that wad which is why we don't have all 10 of them up there with the rest now as for the eight we do have up here we had a total of a 16 and a half inch spread so we had the beginnings of what would be a really decent pattern especially if those two that we were missing kind of filled in right in the middle of it there instead of having kind of a half moon or a c-shaped pattern so definitely a little bit interesting the overall size of the pattern there is pretty good at 16 and a half inches with a load of triple lot buck that's going to absolutely hammer whatever you're aiming at but i did not expect to see those two pellets get stuck in that little wad and completely punch through the whole bottom down there so was it a fluke I don't know. We've never had that problem at all with any of the other copper plated shells that we've tested, both on their own through stock flush chokes or through the buck kicker choke. So considering that this is now a triple lot buck pellet with a little bit bigger pellets with the same little wad they used in all of them, I don't know. It may have just been a fluke, but it may have also been a case of bigger pellet trying to squeeze through that buck kicker choke, just kind of jamming things up a little bit, causing them to get stuck down in there. I don't know. Definitely a little bit interesting, but I guess let's throw a a couple templates up and see what we actually got is for some real life scenarios. 
All right, so here's our 10 inch circle. And if we give it the benefit of the doubt and put it kind of where a lot of our shot concentrated in what is essentially kind of the core, we would have had five out of the 10 pellets within a 10 inch circle. With triple out buck, that's gonna be hitting pretty hard. So overall for a 10 inch circle, when we put it in kind of the best case scenario with where our core kind of is, definitely not looking too bad overall there. But let's throw a couple animal templates up and see how this shot would have actually looked if you would have taken this particular shot out there on a hunt all right so first up here is our deer template and if we were to line it up with where our point of aim would have been in a hunting type of scenario we would have had a definite five pellets that would hit him right through the vital area there we definitely had three of them right through the lungs one that might be just a touch farther forward up in the high shoulder and one that might have clipped a little bit of spine so yeah that's absolutely a dead deer all day long now as you can see we definitely are missing a couple pellets there that i would really like to have in those vital areas with triple out buck five pellets through there is absolutely going to get the job done but when we're still missing two of them that were stuck in the wad down there at the very bottom that definitely hurts our pattern a little bit i'd say and who knows we could have had a little bit more condensed of a pattern if they would have all actually left out of the wad like they were supposed to so is it the best triple out buck shell that we've tested as per a deer hunting template would show us no but is it still good enough? Yeah, absolutely. And in the grand scheme of things, if you would have taken this shot out in the woods, you probably never would have known that you had pellets still stuck in a wad. So it would still do the job at the end of the day. But I guess let's move over to our hog template, a little bit smaller of an animal. I think it's gonna be pretty much the same story, but we'll at least take a look at it since I have the template out here. All right, so here's that hog template, and like I suspected, it is pretty well the same story. We had a definite five hit him kind of right through the vitals and shoulder area there, with one or two more that might have just barely caught the edge of him somewhere. So yeah, once again, dead hog all day long. But we are missing a few pellets that I would definitely like to have in that pattern. So at the end of the day, we had the makings of a really nice pattern here with 16 and a half inches of spread, but we also saw some really weird things, which is that just a one-off case scenario? I don't know, but based on how this wad looks, I have a feeling that if we took a few more shots with this same combo, we would probably see about the same result. So let's take a look at that wad, which tells a little bit more of the story here. Okay, and here's that wad, and you can immediately see how banged up it is. Now, some of that is from punching through several layers of this target paper and a board from the pallet, but immediately you can see on the bottom here two big old holes where it sure looks like two pellets got stuck in the bottom there, considering how far this wad flew. Now, these never fly 40 yards. Typically, they're about 30 yards or so at best. So the fact that we were able to punch through everything down here on the target tells me that these two pellets were probably probably stuck in this wad all the way up until they hit that hard target board and then they would have exited out of the back. So definitely very interesting and I can probably guess that see how the tips are kind of bent over and the little holes up here at the front of the wad. This probably caught on the porting in that choke and just jammed it up enough to where this is the result that we had. So definitely a very strange result here and not something I would have expected to see but that's why we test things because sometimes certain shells can do do weird things or certain combos can just not perform anywhere even close to how you would have expected them to so definitely very strange and interesting to see today all right y'all well what did you think about that pattern right there definitely some very strange results that's for sure we had the makings of a 16 and a half inch spread there so if we would have had those two pellets right in that big central area we would have had a really nice pattern on our hands and i guess i should mention this because i'm sure somebody's already commented it by this point as to why if i saw weird results like that why didn't we take another shot and in the grand scheme of things i don't have very many of these shells so i have to make do with what i do have and i have a few other things i want to test with them still but i suppose if it's something that just an overwhelming amount of you want to see us revisit then we may come back and revisit it but based on how many tests i've done with the copper plated shells and buckshot in general the chances of us getting the same result again are very high i would say i think it's just a case of a little bit larger of a pellet with a pretty fragile wad and porting in the choke and stuff just kind of getting everything jammed up right there at the start so i don't know if we can really get much better than this out of it so i don't know leave all your thoughts down below 
low. Is that about what you expected? Were you a little surprised one way or the other? Have you tested any of the federal copper plated triple lot buck shells or run them through the buck kicker choke? And if so, what kind of results have you seen out of them? What do you think happened here at the end of the day? Do you think it's just kind of a choke and shell combination where everything got jammed up kind of like what I think? Or is there something else that you can think of that might have went on? And is there another combination or setup that you might want to see these shells through? Let me know all that down below. But with that being said, I've got some more testing to get done for you guys today, so I'm going to get back to it. As always, we have the channel Instagram as well as the mailbox where you can send stuff if you'd like to. All that information will be in the description if you're interested in it, but I'm going to get back to it, so I'll see y'all in the next one.